بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We want to discuss uh, stability and sustainability of Islamic finance and uh, of course after بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم I have يعني some introductory point which is many writings take it in kind of different uh, direction. Uh, sustain, then we need to distinguish between sustainability of the finance system and sustainability of uh, institutions that implement that system. That is the difference between sustainability between, for instance, the capitalist finance system uh, and the conventional banks. These are two different things, not the same. So whenever we talk about sustainability of a system, we need to look at the uh, in, ingredient component nature of that system, not at the numbers because the numbers reflect the institution and does, do not reflect the system itself. So the numbers uh, comparing uh, Islamic banks and conventional banks in both sustainability or stability or everything, when you compare numbers, you are comparing really the performance of the management, the efficiency of the management, the ability of the management, but you are not comparing the systems. So here we need to probably look at a definition again, sustainability of a financial system is an expression of its ability to survive in variant legal, social, and cultural environments. On the other hand, sustainability of a bank refers to its ability to survive and have long-term solvency and prosperity. This is essentially measured. We are then about the management performance and the management abilities and actions and whatnot. We are not talking about the system itself. Here, I am going to concentrate on the system itself. This is one. Another point which is also important, sustainability and stability are very closely related concepts and uh, they are interrelated, they overlap in most of the uh, ingredients that they deal with. So we are looking at them together in that sense, okay? Uh, financing environment sustaining the project is not sustainability. Oh, in sir, other I words, see the slide, sir. there are many writings that say green Islamic finance. Green Islamic finance has no meaning really in, in reality because there is nothing green or blue or uh, red about Islamic finance. Islamic finance uh, may finance green doctor, projects. But we cannot see the slides from your side. Other projects also that may be blue project for investment in the sea. Uh, it may also finance uh, the agricultural projects or energy projects, whatever. So the issue of what we finance is something different than the finance system. You cannot talk about uh, Islamic finance, green Islamic finance. You can talk about Islamic finance of green project. The same way sustainability of the system is different than uh, the, the financing environment and sustainable uh, projects. Okay, we know that so some of the energy sources the are depletable. And once these uh, energy sources are depleted, uh, there will, we need another source of energy. And there are some energy sources that are 
not as depletable as the others. Okay, now financing depletable uh, energy from sources. Your slides, from your side, sir, if you could share the slides. Not sustainable because a time will come where these sources. Will come. Sir, uh, I'm sliding the you can see the. What are, I mean, I, am I the only speaker or there are different speakers? Uh, so you are the only speaker, but uh, I, we cannot see the slides that you are reading from. You cannot see it? Uh, no, we can just see the main slides, uh, which says the stability and sustainability of Islamic finance. Yeah, I mean, it's okay. changing. So this slide is the one that has two points financing environmental sustained or environment sustained project is not sustainable finance. So we need to distinguish between sustainable finance and uh, the environment sustainable projects. And these are, uh, of course, they are different. No, sir, we cannot uh, see the slides. We have requested you to uh, give the control if you could accept that. What do I do, please? Uh, yes. He's controlling please. your screen. It's okay. Control the screen. What do I do now? To uh, I mean, if you want to control the screen, it's fine with me. Uh, sure, sir. Okay, are you controlling it? Uh, uh, sir, can you please tell me the slide number on which you are on? I did not understand you, my friend. Uh, I'm just asking that on which slide number you are on, from which uh, from which slide number are you reading the content? This is probably the fourth slide. It's, it says the content on the top. Uh, sure, sir. Yeah, you, you may continue, sir. For this, no, you, you transfer to the next one. Go back one, please. Uh, yes. Okay, here. Okay. You are now controlling it. It's fine with me. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. So we, uh, I want to discuss the sustainability and stability of the system and not of uh, institutions that implement this system or the other. So our discussion has four points. One, Quickly, we will go through, but in a very quick manner, uh, uh, go, we will go through the causes of financial inst instability or by, for the same token, really, also lack of sustainability. And then we will look into the inherent stability elements in the Islamic system of finance. And then we will uh, take a quick look also at the uh, effect of the 2008 crisis on banks and how it affects different banks in different way. And we'll try to see a few words on the uh, way forward. My main focus is definitely on the second point, which is the inherent stability and uh, sustainability of the Islamic finance as a system. But to take the first point in a quick way, please turn on the slide. Okay, okay, fine, I can turn it also. No, you went too far. Uh, okay, so there are the causes of the financial instability in the world today have two kinds of sources. One, the nature of financial relationships. There is an instability and sustainability uh, causes that are by definition related to finance anyway. And there is also, there are causes that are related to the capitalist financial system, to financial capitalism. So when we talk about the issues that relate, that may cause instability in, the, in finance, of course, uncertainty about the future is an, a major element. 
uncertainty about the future affects everything in our life, including our own selves. I mean, we, we are walking today. We don't know whether we are going to be walking tomorrow or not. So that there is always uncertainty about future. And that applies in finance because in finance we deal with different persons. Each person may manage own uncertainty uh, in, in uh, his or her own way. But when we come to interpersonal relations, whether between units or natural persons, of course, the interpersonal relations, uncertainty will be uh, kind of uh, explode higher. Uh, between the persons. So in finance, we have, of course, uncertainty about the future. Uh, we have uh, causes that come from the management because also always management have different approaches and different ways of governance. Many of these causes for instability may come from mistakes the management do. Similarly, again, mistakes from the supervisory Ma uh, authorities and supervisory decisions. And of course, the macroeconomic uh, problems also affect the finance sector very strongly and the currency exchange relationship with other currencies. All these are elements. Each one of them is a big issue that needs, of course, to be discussed in detail, but that's not our subject now. Okay, we know that these cause instability and there is a kind of instability in the uh, system in finance, whatever we do and wherever we go, whether it is Islamic or conventional or anything else. Yet the, in the, the, the capitalist system of finance has added a lot to this natural instability or difficulty in sustainability of a, a finance system. In the financial capitalism, we notice that there is excessive credit, ex excessive indebtedness. We notice that the, the, the institutions in the system are interconnected very heavily to the extent that cause systemic domino effect. And also we uh, notice, especially in uh, over the last uh, 40 years, since the 80s, 1980s until now, uh, we notice a, a, a huge uh, kind of um, hesitation and contradiction in the regulatory behavior and approach toward the uh, system and toward finance. So we'll take a quick look also at these three points, uh, the excessive credit or excessive indebtedness. There is no <coughs> doubt and several studies showed that in reality, yes, the, uh, there is a, 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 a direct relationship between the growth of uh, credit, the growth of indebted, indebtedness, and financial crisis. Um, that's a grow to certain level that there will be a bubble that need to blow and it will blow causing crisis. Uh, almost all the past crisis for uh, the, 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 the hundred year uh, approximately more or less uh, have been study wise related to uh, uh, excessive credit growth, that credit growth, uh, credit growth a bit more than what real market can uh, afford. And then we have a bubble and the bubble will uh, burst and the burst will cause a crisis continuously. Excessive credit often lead to build up of systemic uh, bubbles and also the uh, these asset prices bubbles will will have to burst anyway and then uh, causing uh, more uh, uh, problem and causing uh, difficulties in the system 
So the, uh, there is too much connectivity in the uh -huh. banking system. And this is especially caused, again, related, very much related, highly related to the uh, credit growth, but there is a credit in, 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 in uh, interconnections between the financial institutions that is caused by essentially trading uh, credit or trading indebtedness between the financial institution. Let's remember that in 2008, the, the first big bank that fell apart was Lehman Brothers and Lehman Brothers were on, was only a bank that receives debts or indebtedness or excess uh, credit from other banks. It does not deal directly with the market, uh, whether in terms of individuals or corporations, it deals with banks. So the problem here is that the interbank connection uh, has become too much to the extent that each bank depends on other banks in credit itself. And if there is any problem with the credit in any of these banks, that will affect the lenders of, of, of that bank and will go on and create that domino uh, effect. So the uh, credit, we can call it probably this is related to the credit uh, re interrelationships between the finance institutions, uh, which is also excessive in the uh, capitalist finance system. Uh, similarly, we, we see banks will not lend at almost any rate. Uh, at this stage, of course, common uh, uh, a, a common short-term uh, financing will appear uh, uh, quickly and then uh, in, in between banks will cause interrelations to the uh, banks together. So this is uh, the, the other issue here that uh, becomes uh, hot also. So we, uh, the, the, uh, the third point is too much inter, oh, this is the second point, which, okay. The third point is the, uh, the hesitation, or I should say the alternating uh, regulations that uh, going uh, in different directions and very often going to extremes in different directions. Regulations and deregulations since the 1980s, especially in America, and America is the leading economy and the leading finance market in this regard. So we have regulation and deregulations have, are always done from inside the box without any genuine new ideas. For instance, after the heavy regulatory moves in 1989, the uh, Community Reinvestment Act uh, was enforced and then uh, allowing banks to lend to poor neighborhood. Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac took these loans and these loans were subprime loans. Again, in 1999, the Financial Services Modernization Act uh, came and it repealed the, uh, the, the glass uh, Stegall Act of the 1933. This repeal allowed, allowed banks to use deposit money to invest in derivatives, allow banks in fact to go in, in derivatives almost without limit. In 2008, in, in, in the year 2000, the Commodity Future Modernization Act uh, exempted credit default swaps and other derivatives from regulation. So banks were creating these derivatives uh, without much of limitation. 
and they were throwing them in the market and investing in them by other banks at the same time, which created again uh, that uh, serious uh, issue in the uh, uh, in the banking system. Uh, okay, we go now to the second point, which is our focus really, uh, looking at the Islamic system. And we want to notice in it that there is inherent intrinsic sustainability and stability forces inside the Islamic system that make it uh, more uh, stable and more sustainable at the same time. Uh, the fundamental axioms of the Islamic economic, uh, financial system are these three basic fundamentals. I wouldn't call them principles. They are a bit more than principles. Uh, I call them realism, justice, and moral screen. We will discuss each one of them, and we will notice that for each one of them, where do they come from and what is their effect And uh, uh, as we go uh, in that. The, the uh, realism is in fact only a reflection of the fact that Islamic finance is asset, or rather I prefer to use the word property uh, based, it is assets or goods, but in fact, it is property based. That means that when you do Islamic finance, you have to own before you can, uh, you would be able to provide any finance. So the finance provision is based always on ownership, on property ownership, and on not only any property ownership, or rather on a real market property ownership uh, with certain conditions that we'll look at them uh, uh, quickly. So, but these eight points are very important at this point because we want to study them one by one, the uh, being asset or property based, uh, uh, having a cap on debt creation and on debt size, uh, the signal, uh, the finance signal comes to the finance sector from the real market rather than from finance to the real market as in the capitalist system. The fourth point is the, uh, the non-presence of debt trading. You, you will have to hold on to the debt that you create until that debt is settled. Then the next point is where it is there now hidden. How do I get it here from this hiding uh, place? Can you take this? Okay, here. And the uh, other one here. And uh, okay, we want to go back to the other one. Okay, the uh, non-existence of virtual or non-real, non-value adding, rather non-real value adding uh, transactions. All the transactions that may not add real value then are not uh, existing in the Islamic system. There will be also uh, no sale of risk and no creation of risk security and no trade of risk. The concept of inclusiveness of all economic units in the uh, finance sector and the, 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 the characteristic that Islamic finance is by own, by its own nature is developmental uh, on its own without being yani, adding a developmental uh, consideration. Uh, let's discuss these points one by one. The first one is asset or, asset or property based. Of course, when uh, Islamic finance, when it is done through either sale or lease or sharing, then Islamic finance is strictly tied to the real market transaction. Each finance transaction is accompanied 
by a real market activity of exchange or production. Actual sale of goods and services, that's leasing, and actual renting of assets, that's also leasing, and actual uh, creation or expansion of a project. So the, the nature of Islamic finance makes it tightly related to the real uh, market and Islamic finance can only be performed through sale, lease, or sharing. All of these require property ownership and are property based. The second point, by definition, again, while debt and lease in Islamic finance create debt, but there is always a cap on the debt creating. Debt creation uh, always has a cap because it is tied to the actual transactions that are done in the real market. Debt cannot be created beyond the limit of the actual transactions in the real market, the real market determines the cap that is put on debt creation because you cannot go beyond the uh, actual uh, market transactions because Islamic finance can only be done through real sale or real leasing or real uh, creation or expansion of project. That means we are restricting the debt creation to being airtight with the exchange, uh, uh, exchange of hands over goods and services. The finance providers become real facilitator of the flow of real production to its final users. No different layers of debt are created. And normally the size of finance is always smaller than the size of real market because normally we do not finance 100%. We always have what is called the margin of seriousness or part of the uh, transaction should be financed by the uh, beneficiary. And so the finance will be less than the value of the real transaction in the market. The next point, the signal, the Islamic finance notice, it start, we call it sale to the uh, purchase orderer. We buy the goods on the order of the purchase orderer and we sell it to him. We lease also to the purchase orderer. We, we give a sharing finance in Musharaka or in Mudaraba also to the requester of uh, project, either expansion or creation and you. Know, all these are create direction of the, uh, of the signal from the real market into the finance. So the transaction begins in the real market and then goes to the finance to finance it in as much as it needed to that financing and it does not go beyond. This implies that the return on financing, which is an, a very important point here, is decided and determined in the real market rather than in the finance sector. It is determined by how much the market can appreciate or evaluate the help of finance provision. The next point is uh, elimination of debt trading uh, and holding on to debts that you create. Once an Islamic finance institution creates a debt, it will have to hold on to it until maturity. And of course, uh, if there is any problem with this debt, then it is the, 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 it is going to be the loser and nobody else. You cannot throw the bug on somebody else, on other units in the economy. 
and uh, there is no debt securitization. There is no debt sale. There is no debt uh, uh, trading. So once you create a debt, that debt remains with you and that reduces, of course, or rather eliminate really most of the interconnection between banks, which are essentially debt, uh, debt trading uh, based. So when we go to the next point, when we remove all non-real value adding transactions, all of them are uh, simply eliminated in Islamic finance. The simplest form of them is really gambling. And similar to gambl gambling is uh, zero sum transactions. All zero sum transactions are not permissible. Speculative behavior and speculative contracts are not permissible. For instance, uh, uh, differences, uh, contract for the differences are not permitted. Betting on uh, future prices are not also part of the Islamic system. All these cannot be done at all. In addition to eliminating, in fact, all the derivatives that uh, we have them in the capitalist market today, and they are not uh, acceptable in the uh, context of Islamic finance. Uh, also, all pure cash transactions where goods are not intended in reality are not permissible. And this is what the, uh, 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 all the uh, fiqh academies uh, that are uh, given uh, studied these issues gave opinions that uh, all pure cash transactions, tawarruq and ina and all these are not permissible because the goods in them uh, are not intended for their own self. And of course, there is a collusion between the uh, parties on the concept of cash now for a larger amount of debt in the future. So all these are removed from the market and therefore finance that is done for real commodities is the only thing that remains in the market. The next point is the issue of risk that there is no sale of risk in Islamic finance and there is no packaging of risk and trading it in the market or securitizing risk in the market. The rule of no risk, no gain applies only to ownership risk. Ownership risk has to be always there because if you don't own, you do not earn. You have to own in order to earn. And ownership has always two facets. It has the risk of ownership, destruction or uh, being deserved by some other party, uh, uh, another third party, or, and that is the risk of ownership and the entitlement. If you own a thing, you are entitled to any increment that happens in, that, uh, uh, in what you own. And of course, you are exposed to the risk that may uh, affect uh, the, the item that you own. Market risk, that is price risk and liquidity risk, may be avoided, may be reduced, and also may be mitigated. Risk is not tradable, any kind of risk. Uh, it is not a commodity that is for trade, and it is not a creator of value added. Risk does not create. It is related, yes, to ownership and of course, entitlement is a facet of that ownership, but risk does not create added value itself. Risk is not the reason or cause for return. Uh, risk is related, yes, to return, but related as being together two facets of ownership. If you don't own, you do not earn. But if you, if you are exposed to risk alone without ownership, also you do not earn. So risk alone, as it is clear in the concept of kafala in Sharia uh, or the uh, uh, 
uh, guarantees or yeah. a, a guarantor to guarantee the debt of another party, that guarantee does not entitle the guarantor to any re uh, revenue, to any return. Of course, this is different to say if there is any cost, though he's entitled to compensation of cost, but no return definitely. And this is the Sharia opinion on it because there is no ownership. But they, they, the guarantor doesn't own a property that generates added value. So here we talk about a property that generate added value is uh, what uh, causes the return but not the risk itself. Price and liquidity risks are irrelevant to entitlement uh, to the increments. You are entitled to the increment because the, uh, the increment happened in your property. Like if you own a property and that property is, happens to be a cow that gives milk, you own the milk and nobody else can make a claim on it. Uh, only risk of ownership is what is relevant because it is necessary and intrinsic uh, to ownership. It is inseparable from ownership. If you own a thing, of course, you are exposed to the risk of that thing. Uh, inclusiveness is also an important aspect of uh, realism in Islamic uh, finance. Uh, or of the fundament of realism, because it gives, uh, the, the Islam believes in circulation of wealth between all people of the society, not between the rich alone. And that in inclusiveness covers individuals and corporate and regardless of all other status, and everybody should have accessibility to finance, and this is the reality of Islamic finance by its nature. Uh, and of course, uh, there are many benefits of inclusiveness uh, in reducing cost and reducing risk. Islamic finance is developmental by its nature. Whether we finance consumers, Financing consumer is as beautiful as financing businesses. Because when we finance consumers, we are giving the producers of the consumer goods the signal that your, your goods are uh, acceptable in the market. You should go ahead and produce more of them. The shelves are emptied of these uh, kind of goods, then produce more. So the financing consumer goods is itself developmental. So is financing businesses. There is no preference in the system, in the system of Islamic finance that we should finance businesses over financing uh, consumers. Both are developmental by definition, by their nature. There is no preference in Islamic finance of one over the other. Financing real sectors like consumption, SMEs, infrastructure, technology, factories, healthcare, etc., has an impact on employment creation, including financing consumption, of course, and on technological advancement and uh, the, the, the financing, clear energy, etc. All that are developmental and that is the nature of Islamic finance. Abstaining from financing harmful services and products help the community channel resources to their developmental activities. Notice here, it is also an important point and it is an aspect of the uh, developmental nature of Islamic finance. When we withhold financing, from any harmful product, say cigarettes or tobacco. That means, of course, we are channeling resources toward uh, the, the, the uh, areas of production that are uh, uh, helpful to the economy. 
and to the people and to the environment. Anything that is harmful is not permissible to finance. And that is a general rule in Sharia. It goes beyond that impact. When we stop also the financing, uh, when, when we prevent and, and uh, uh, stop financing from uh, the, uh, uh, the, the virtual asset that do not add value, such as options, etc. Now we are really channeling resources, human resources and financial resources and all kinds of resources that are channeled from the virtual non-productive uh, transactions and the assets into the real production. So all these resources are not permissible to be used into the virtual non-value adding uh, transactions or assets. And that means they are uh, the, the only way for investing these resources would be in the real market and in the real transactions that benefit a human being. What is here? What happened here? Okay. The second principle is the prince or the second fundament is the fundament of justice. And the basic concept in it is uh, earning by owning. Isn't that just, I Annie? Mean, this is, I remember always the statement or the couplet of uh, the, the uh, uh, I mean, call it the founder of Pakistan. He himself wasn't Pakistani, but he was the founder of Pakistan, the theoretical founder of Pakistan, Muhammad Iqbal. I remember always his couplet in Jawab Shakwa, where God tells him, is it not just that those who plant, who, who, who put the seeds in the plant, in the ground, take the harvest, earning by owning. This is the fundamental principle of economic justice. And in Islamic finance, you own assets and goods and assets and goods must be goods that can grow. If you own an asset that cannot grow, cannot increase. And take an example, for instance, if you own uh, a, a, a kilo of grain, let it be even, uh, and, and the, the, there is a condition that this kilo of grain must be put in an iron lock, an iron bolt, and not, not, never come out and never be watered or be used for in, in the soil or in anything. Of course, this, uh, th th this grain will rather rotten through time and will not increase. Similarly, debt does not increase by its nature. Now notice what is debt? Debt is an interpersonal relation and it cannot by its nature, its definition cannot increase. I always remember the statement of Paul Samuelson that economics, it what, every, what everybody understands. If not everybody understands it, then it's not economic. I want to give a question or rather an example that everybody understands. We have never seen debt carrying a baby debt. We have never seen a pregnant debt or a debt giving birth to a baby debt. We have never seen debt that gives a utility, like we take a jacket and it gives me a utility, or we, uh, we sit under a roof and that roof gives me utility. We never have seen uh, a debt giving utility. So debt by its nature is a mute asset. It does not generate added value utility or increment could be added value. And in reality then, in the plain reality, not in the Wall Street jargon, because Wall Street jargon may put some uh, blurness on our vision because of the repeated claim 
that debt increases, debt increases, but debt in fact do not increase. That is the reality uh, the, and the plain reality. Now, in Islamic finance, then the goods or assets that do not grow, do not generate added value are not uh, assets that can be used uh, for uh, Islamic finance. So we cannot start from a debt in Islamic finance and say reschedule a debt for increment. You start from a debt. We cannot start in Islamic finance from a loan because a loan is a debt itself. The moment you give a, a loan lending, that is a debt. So we do not start. We start from the real goods in the market and then we may create debt and that debt that is being created always is limited and there is a cap on its size. The second condition here is very important that an asset that uh, is not moral is not also acceptable in Islamic finance. Take the example of cigarette. Cigarettes are now determined without dispute scientifically, determined as harmful without any scientific dispute. And we take that as a basis for considering them not uh, moral and consequently cannot be uh, an object of financing in Islamic finance. So when we talk about earning by owning, we also, of course, mean earning a good or an asset that by itself, by its nature, generate added value, able to generate added value, and also must be uh, morally tested. In conventional uh, finance, of course, it, uh, or it starts with debts and you own always only a debt. And the debt, in fact, does not grow. So Islamic finance, conventional finance is based on a, a fundamentally non-just uh, a principle which is debt may increase. Debt does not increase by its nature. And therefore it is a conventional finance uh, that is based on interest, based on debts growing is not just and not real. The bank depositor relationship in Islamic finance, again, it is based on ownership again. Partnership of the depositors with the Islamic bank is a partnership, a genuine partnership. You are partner with the bank when you uh, give the bank deposits, um, profit sharing uh, investment deposit. The holders of these deposits are definitely partners with the bank and they must uh, share with the bank the risk of the property they own and they, uh, they are by that virtue of being partner, uh, co-owners with the bank, by that per virtue, they deserve part of the return, they deserve return. And by the same token, the bank can lean on them at hard time. When, we, when the bank is faced with the hardship, in making revenues or in increasing revenues can lean on these partners and distribute less uh, revenue to them, less return to them. Whereas in the conventional uh, finance uh, banks are, or financial institutions are committed to an amount of return to the depositors. So the depositors transfer the risk uh, to the uh, conventional bank and uh, the, which guarantees them uh, a, a part of the profit. So definitely then uh, the, there is an injustice in that uh, by its nature. So the, uh, okay, again, in the bank depositors relationship, uh, in the Islamic bank, 
you have to own and then sell and earn. Own and lease what you already own. Create new project, expanding existing projects. All these are functions uh, Islamic banks do. Conventional banks give debts. Conventional banks uh, uh, the, the, the reschedule debt. They sell and buy debts and they trade risk. All these are not functions that can be done in the Islamic banks in the use of uh, funds. So the, uh, the, the, the last point or, or part of the justice rather, uh, again, is talking about social justice. Until now, we talk about economic justice. But if we want to talk about social justice, uh, social justice is be uh, becomes a different issue and that issue of social justice is done through the way the Islamic, the Islamic finance provide. So the, the social justice has its own means and its own institutions. Uh, it's not done by the same uh, institutions that provide economic justice what is this thing oh gosh here we can remove this okay so taking care of the poor has its own institutions in the islamic finance which is the islamic social finance islamic social finance includes institutions like zakah awqaf charity and ngos including my microfinance organizations. So these are the organizations and the tools that provide social justice for the poor and needy. Uh, okay, what is that? What happened here? What happened here? I don't know. Screen sharing has just ended. Uh, we cannot see the slides anymore. You see it now? I mean, you are administering it or I am administering it. I don't know really. But anyway, do you see this slide about uh, social justice? Uh, no, sir. We are there, I guess Can you put it on, uh, on online. Can you share it from your side? I'm sure, sir. Uh, yes, we are sharing it, sir, from our side. Okay, uh, uh, you did it. Okay, so we go to the third pillar of Islamic finance or third fundament of Islamic finance, which is the moral screen. You see, there is a concept which is very important concept in uh, our Sharia. Anything that is not moral is not a property, cannot be owned by any Muslim. So we, uh, and, and when we talk about um, moral screen, then we talk about things that, are, that make the object of the uh, property ownership and also the ways of exchanging these uh, properties. So both ways, the contract should be moral and contract conditions should be moral and as much as the object of the contract should be moral. We can give examples on both of them from Islamic finance, but let me give only one example at this moment and go to the next uh, issue in it. The, the, the one example in exchange, for instance, when we create a partnership, the um, moral issue of justice comes more important than consent. And this is why, because of the moral issue of justice, uh, regardless of what conditions there may be in the partnership contract, losses should be distributed according to the uh, capital contributions of the partners in proportion to their capital contributions, simply in application of the moral principle of justice, which is 
uh, a loss is a decline in your property. So definitely it can only be distributed between the partners in proportion to their capital contribution. Otherwise it will not be just any, any other condition, even consensual conditions could be um, dented really because not every consensual condition is really consensual. It could be under duress, it could be under emergency, it could be under many other reasons uh, or under uh, uh, emotional, emotional influence or anything, but justice stands more. Now, when we comes to goods, we gave the example of cigarettes. Cigarettes in Islamic finance cannot be uh, help cannot be financed from the day of planting the tobacco until the day of selling it to the consumers. All these cannot be financed because cigarette is harmful. And that should bring me to the second point, which is really important. The criteria, the moral criteria in our moral screening in Islamic finance is the concept of harmful or harmfulness or harm and benefit. We weigh the harm and benefit as Allah told us in the Quran. We weigh them and, and if, we, if, if the good aspect overweigh the harm aspect, then we remove that, uh, uh, we accept that commodity uh, or that uh, item. And if the harmful aspect overweigh the uh, good aspect, then we reject that uh, uh, item completely. And how do we learn that? By the scientific human knowledge of the time. There was a time Muslims thought that coffee is haram and uh, they thought it is harmful. But when the science proved it is not harmful, then we started all drinking coffee. And the, the whole uh, uh, idea was removed and the fatwa have been changed and now coffee is not haram. There was a time cigarettes were not considered haram and many people were smoking and many Sharia scholars, specialized Sharia scholars, we're also smoking or using tobacco in any other way of use for sniffing or for chewing. But yet when the science proved that tobacco is harmful, is hurtful to human body, then we made the ruling that tobacco is haram and definitely the, uh, uh, the, the, we remove it from the, uh, the, the arena of Islamic finance. I want to mention at this point, only as a footnote really, that, okay, pork, pork is prohibited. We don't finance pork in Islamic finance because it is hurtful. We are told it is hurtful by the revelation. And we are told by the revelation in uh, verse number 157, in surah number seven, that God had only prohibited what is harmful. He did not prohibit the good things, things that are beneficial, that are useful, are not prohibited, and things that are harmful are the only things that are prohibited. We know from revelation, because it pro the, the revelation prohibits uh, pork eating, we know that eating pork is harmful, science did not prove that yet. There was a time when science did not prove that liquor was prohibited, was wrong, liquor was harmful. Um, and, uh, but now we have reports, undisputed reports at all by the, the most respected uh, professional uh, uh, institutions that uh, any quantity of liquor is harmful for the, uh, the human body. Of course, the, it says any quantity of liquor above 
zero. So it must be zero at all the time. In other words, the liquor was prohibited and we rejected financing it on the basis of being harmful only on the knowledge received from the revelation, but now science conferred, co confirmed this knowledge the same way definitely sometime in the future will come when uh, science will also confirm that eating pork is, uh, is harmful to human uh, body. It is not yet done scientifically, but the revelation tells us that, and it is going to be in the future. One thing we need to, uh, to, to keep in mind that when we talk about moral screening, that itself is a support and help for environment, and it is also a support and help for development. So we are talking about Islamic finance being developmental and being also uh, environmental friendly and environmentally sustainable. You don't need only to finance uh, solar energy to be uh, 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 friendly to the environment. Uh, uh, abstention from financing any harmful thing, whether to the environment or to the society or to the plants or to other animals even, is not uh, uh, acceptable and that is a moral value in the Islamic financial system and that moral value is sustainable uh, in, in, when it comes to the environment. Uh, again, uh, probably the final discussion in this moral screening, we need in the uh, financial market, we need a muhtasib, we need an ombudsman, we need hisbah in the financial market because hisbah would screen the transactions before we reach to the law and the law enforcement and the formal regulations. We look at them on moral basis, on their quick weighing of benefit and harm before we reach the law. And there is always new innovations in the uh, system and these and uh, in, in any society and these new innovations need to be always tested, although the law did not yet speak about them because of that uh, being innovations. So the, we need uh, an ombudsman in the financial system to assure that no such new things that may be harmful may go in the market and uh, go even behind the regulation because the regulation did not grow and develop uh, as fast as these innovations. So we need definitely a financial ombudsman other than the supervisory authorities. Supervisory authorities are not really doing that because they are limited by the laws and regulations. An ombudsman will be looking for the moral values more than that and the benefit to society and harm in a quick manner that the uh, regulations cannot catch up with. If we uh, take a quick look at the third point that uh, we wanted to discuss in our discussion today. The third point is an important one, but if we need to really look at it in a quick manner, Islamic finance stability during the uh, financial crisis. This is sustainability against the odds of what may happen uh, as time goes. So definitely the stability during the crisis, uh, theoretically, we can say it is definitely more stable because of the factors that we see. It is, it is stick on a one-to-one -one relationship with the market, the real market transactions, and we shouldn't go beyond that. There are many studies on theoretical levels that uh, conclude to the uh, theoretical 
stability of the uh, Islamic uh, finance. Even during the last crisis, there are several studies, definitely it has been proven definitely that Islamic financial institutions were less uh, affected by the, 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 this crisis of 2008 than conventional financial institutions, than their counterpart. And basically the effect that came to the Islamic financial institutions came through some of their customers who were dually uh, dealing with both financial and conventional, and they failed with the conventional and their abilities to uh, fulfill with the uh, Islamic financial institutions have been reduced because of that. So this is the main reason uh, that they were affected. There was another reason in certain areas where the law allowed, uh, in fact, both conventional and Islamic financial institutions to trade in real estate. And when real estate prices went down in Dubai and in Qatar and in Bahrain and in Kuwait, the uh, Islamic banks and conventional banks were both affected. And this effect is only uh, caused by the really the laws in these areas that allow banks to uh, to own uh, real estate. Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I need that happened. But in in other areas, uh, that did not happen because the uh, banks, all Islamic and conventional, were not permitted to deal with conventional banks. So here, for instance. Uh, according to Jarhi and Sanwari uh, and Zakaria in several studies and uh, uh, Aruri also et al in several, at several times, Islamic financial system provides the best alternative solution to the challenging issues of the conventional financial system. Ullah and Lee concluded that the Islamic uh, finance due to its conservative investment mechanism was more resilient to the 2008 global financial crisis. We have several studies of that kind anyway, and there are some studies that find no significant statistical difference between the resilience of both conventional and Islamic uh, financial institutions of similar sizes. Um, and depend on the environment also, uh, especially in the Western environment, they notice that there is no sim difference really, uh, statistical, uh, uh, statistically substantial difference uh, that effective uh, uh, the differences to claim a difference between them, like a study in UK and in others. Uh, so that uh, goes yani, all of it, but definitely uh, Islamic financial stability. Uh, yani, we need to mention a few points. Islamic banking sector worldwide continued to expand during the COVID-19. Profitability and the asset and market share of Islamic bank sector increased throughout the pandemic. Uh, demonstrating the sector resilience in 2001, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the global Sukuk market exhibited remarkable resilience. In 2020, Islamic funds continued to expand in size despite uh, a global contraction and despite the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So all these factors give some hints to the stability of the institutions, but the stability of the system is definitely uh, expressed in form of the fundament of that system and in the form of its tight relation to the real market and the just and moral aspect of the real market, not the total real market in any economy, but the real market that excludes these 
transactions and items that are not acceptable in the uh, moral system uh, that is acceptable in Islam. Um, okay, we can go with this uh, quickly. There are studies that uh, did not show really uh, strong uh, difference or strong resilience. Uh, yes, but uh, even with that, we notice that uh, the uh, Islamic finance stability during the financial crisis uh, of 2008, we uh, uh, comparing Islamic and conventional banks, we notice uh, that Islamic banks, uh, uh, they uh, have increased at a higher rate than conventional banks. Assets has, have increased at a higher rate and profit also uh, rate of uh, return on assets have increased at a higher rate and the profit grows at a higher rate. Uh, that is clear from this slide that uh, we'll add it anyway to the written form. So this is uh, should be uh, understood also with it. The way forward, I argue that the way forward, uh, reforming finance should depend on adopting property theory of finance, uh, insisting on the fundament of realism and insisting on the fundaments of moral commitment and uh, justice comes from the nature of the uh, property theory. I didn't mention justice here because it, it is an immediate result of a property theory of finance. So practically we are again talking about uh, the same three uh, component uh, or the three uh, fundament of Islamic finance, which um, uh, uh, any reform should be inspired by these fundament and taken from them. Uh, uh, implanting a concept of earning by owning is very important. And in fact, yani I, I tend to compare that with the, uh, the, the anti-corruption measures because in corruption, when you make earning easy, the, the, the serious effect of corruption is an easy earning. So when you make uh, 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 earning easy through clicks on, the, uh, on your computer, staying late at night and the clicking on your computer uh, in the uh, New York market and in uh, uh, Los Angeles market, uh, that, that really these clicks do not generate real income. What generate real income? Uh, is the, the financing of the real commodities that are in the market, financing their growth, financing their exchange from one hand to hand, by giving the signal through financing consumer, giving the signal to producers to produce more, all these the Islamic finance does and conventional finance in fact does not do, or rather does is not the, 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 the strict function of conventional finance. It does many other things that really obscure the, this function itself. Uh, the, the, the way uh, out, the, the way uh, for the future is to implant to property based that will avoid the quick uh, return quick return without ownership is rejected, is similar to corruption, uh, has, has effect that is similar to the effects of corruption and that uh, really kills the entrepreneurial spirit in the society. Because if you, if you become richer quickly, then why working hard, why making project, why involving in sale and acquiring ownership and sale, and lease and all that, don't take any of these risks, just uh, click uh, quickly on, the, on your computer and you become richer. 
the acid should be not harmful, definitely. Any acid that is harmful is not acceptable, and we should clean our uh, uh, the, the financial sector from financing any harmful uh, uh, materials. Uh, risk trading should completely be avoided, and uh, no risk trading, no risk packaging, and trading, all that should not be uh, acceptable. The, uh, the, the fundamental uh, issue of uh, realism is a requirement of Islamic finance transaction. Islamic finance is based on real asset and real transactions. No fake, no fictitious, no hypothetical, uh, no virtual transactions and Islamic finance uh, instruments are considered and legitimized only if they represent real assets and no, nothing else. Uh, financial instruments, we look at them only for what they represent as real assets. If they represent uh, any swap or any uh, risk uh, packaging, they are not acceptable. Or any virtual assets, of course, they are not. Uh, realism allows financing to be tailored to the size of the market. Uh, uh, it even makes financing slightly less than the size of the real transactions in the market because not every transaction in the real market is 100% debt financed. There is, there is through realism, the finance sector uh, that is through realism, the finance sector will be shaped according to the size of the real market transactions. Of course, the moral commitment will exclude anything that is harmful to individuals, to society, or to the environment, and that should be a, a, in a clear-cut manner. And uh, with this, uh, I should perhaps, before I thank you all, apologize for taking more time than uh,